Dozens of migrants found living in the basement of a furniture store. But when city officials finished counting the people inside, they found 74 asylum seekers and then sent them to migrant shelter in the Bronx. So New York's shelters are full, forcing people to live in illegal apartments all over town. But even though that's shocking, the city is now putting people in illegal apartments of its own. This is the second time in as many days that authorities have uncovered these illegal migrant shelters. The FDNY says there was no ventilation. There was in any natural light. I see bikes in the back. That's when I got along. All over the news, you see that these e-bikes are exploding. When you have situations like what we are facing here, there's some that's going to attempt to exploit it. We were fine. We were just, you know, doing what we have to do. He was charging $300 a month per person. Last week, the city set up what are supposed to be temporary overflow respite sites like this. And are there showers inside? No. Seven climate-controlled tents that have recently just been built. Families will have to walk outdoors to use the bathroom, so obviously there's concerns here. So all over town, you've got these illegal apartments popping up in storefronts and businesses. And that's happening because over 170,000 people have come to New York seeking asylum. And since the city doesn't have any more room to house people, folks are willing to live just about anywhere, even if it's against the law. But what nobody's talking about is how the city's secretly paying slumlords millions to turn illegal buildings into shelters, which could be just as dangerous to the people who move in. And the conditions in some of these places are terrible. You can see dozens of people in these beds appearing as if they're waking up. Neither the Department of Buildings nor the FDNY are saying who was living in these site quarters. So the city's discovered a slew of these places lately. This one had 12 single beds and 14 plus bunk beds. That's 40 people living in a basement storefront. Like this one or this one. Behind that gate, anything could be going on. And if there had been a fire or something, the residents could have been trapped inside. And experts think there could be hundreds of these illegal operations all over town exploiting people. Breaking news. Authorities raiding another illegal migrant housing setup. We're told there were 45 beds inside of what was a vacant storefront. According to management from this building, uh, it was broken into and set up for this uh, rooming house. So it turns out things are even worse at this second storefront. It was broken into. It must have been abandoned or shut down or closed for quite some time. And someone illegally accessed the store, put beds inside, and started charging people. Apparently there were 60 people inside this second shelter and residents spotted it because of the large number of e-bikes parked outside. Those batteries can be very dangerous. And the mastermind of this illegal hotel was making bank. I spoke with the owner of this illegal migrant shelter earlier this afternoon. He confirmed to me that, yes, he was charging $300 a month per person and was making a mint, but said that he... Wow, so 60 beds, $300 a month each. That's eight. $15,000 in illegal income and the guy didn't have to pay rent because apparently somebody broke in and set this whole thing up. And what that means is this crisis is giving New York's greediest landlords an opportunity to make money while putting people's lives at risk. But what's crazy is that the city of New York is doing the exact same thing. They're helping owners of property that would be illegal to turn those same properties into housing so they can make money. And it's something nobody's talking about. So this former warehouse, this might look like a nicer place to stay than an illegal basement with 74 other people inside of it. But the choice of this as the city's next shelter is controversial because it might be dangerous. Apparently the facility itself might be full of pollution and it's owned by one of the worst landlords in New York City. We're in an industrial part of town and this is supposed to become a dormitory for over 400 people. This area is not even zoned for residential use. It's all warehouses and former factories, most of which look like they're abandoned. And what nobody's talking about is how the city is taking some of the worst properties available, owned by some of the worst landlords in town, and is turning them into shelters which are taxpayer supported, creating sort of a migrant industrial complex, which is exploiting not just the people who live in the properties because they might be dangerous, but also the people who have to pay for them so greedy landlords can get richer. Now years ago, this facility was used to manufacture fuel gases, but after years of fuel manufacturing, this entire property is polluted. 
polluted. On top of that, we're in one of the most polluted parts of New York City, next to the infamous Gowanus Canal, which for years has been known to be full of toxic chemicals. And this disgusting river is actually an EPA cleanup site. Look at this, no swimming, no fishing, do not go in here. The EPA has also got air monitoring stations throughout this area just to kind of see what gases are coming out of this thing. Also, this area of town floods when it rains. And the reason that's alarming is because the water out here mixes with rainwater and runs through the streets, flooding apartments and businesses that are away from where this warehouse shelter is going to be located. But now, all of a sudden, the city says it's safe for people to live here. Which is weird, because 20 years ago, this building's former owner asked the city if they could turn it into apartments, and they were told, no, this building's not safe to be an apartment. But suspiciously, after this building was sold to somebody else, then the city changed their mind. And people want to know, was that an accident, or is there something really shady going on here? So controversially, after this building was sold, the city opened up a $4.5 million contract with a nonprofit to operate a shelter here. And not only did this happen pretty much immediately after the building changed hands, but the city and this shady company had to get around the city's own rules for what could and couldn't be used as a dwelling. So when the wrong person owned this building, nobody could live here. But now that the right person owns it, people can move in. That's definitely not weird or suspicious in any way. But look at this, through this little crack in the paper here, you can see beds on the floor. These look like single beds. So the first loophole this city found was that since we're in an emergency situation because of the asylum crisis, we're allowed to make some exceptions that might be dangerous. And the second loophole is that since the manager of this facility is a nonprofit, safety doesn't matter as much anymore. But the nonprofit doesn't own the building. They're renting the building for from the person who recently bought it. And they're getting the money to do it from the city. But with those two loopholes, this building went from being totally unsafe to being perfectly livable, and now somebody's gonna get rich off of it. And what nobody's talking about is, even though the city says the contract to manage this as a shelter goes through 2026, which is about three and a half years from now, the lease on the property is actually nine years. Which means that for some reason, city leaders expect the asylum crisis to continue here for quite some time. But apparently the new owner who's getting all this special treatment just happens to be one of the worst landlords in town with a long history of violations. And apparently their business model is to buy buildings that can become shelters. So they're already part of the homeless industrial complex and they're profiting off that. And they became the new owners of this facility in June of 2023. Had the old owners held on for just another week or two, they could have got this generous contract from the city to lease out their building and use it as a shelter. If only they had known. Seems like quite a gamble to buy a former polluted factory without the knowledge that it would immediately be able to make you rich. Coincidence? You be the judge of that. But the next place we're headed to is even more controversial than this because the city was using it as a shelter even though it didn't have proper bathrooms. So this was one of the city's illegal shelters, but the fire department shut it down after they found out what was going on in here. And this happened just a few months ago. Now there are temporary shelters for asylum seekers until they can be placed in a hotel. But at one site, local immigration advocates say that there's nowhere for them to shower. And are there showers inside? No. What are you doing to... So apparently this place was so poorly suited as a shelter that it did not even have proper bathrooms. People were taking showers in the sinks. That's so sad. Now this building is actually a former college and the layout inside is what you'd expect. Classrooms, hallways. And last year the city was using this building as a quote unquote respite center for asylum seekers where they would go and wait for a shelter bed placement at another location. But after opening it quickly turned into an overnight shelter, which it was never designed to function as and that's where the problem started occurring. And after people had been living here for months, the fire department inspected this place and kicked everybody out. And that's because it didn't have proper fire safety systems inside. And when the fire department inspects a building, they don't inspect it as a former college and say, okay, it's up to code to be a college. No, if people are living in there, they inspect it as if it's supposed to be an apartment and that's where the violations
patients come in and that's what shut this place down. You can even see the vacate order on the door making it unlawful for people to re-enter this place. The fire systems required for people to be at a desk when they're awake in a classroom setting are not the same fire systems you need for people who are sleeping and are not alert in the middle of the night. And what's crazy is at the time this was happening to the city in multiple areas of town. The city was going all in on the quasi-legal illegal shelter model. But one by one the fire department kept shutting them down and this got so bad that the mayor asked the fire department to delay their inspections so that all the shutdowns wouldn't happen so close to each other. But that would have put people's lives at risk because the building's illegal to live in. Now this particular property's been vacant since October. You can see the date everybody got kicked out right here, right there in ink. Apparently if the owner wanted to they could correct the violations and then try to work something out with the city to reuse it. But that's probably not worth doing because the idea of telling people they can live somewhere that doesn't have actual bathrooms, you can't put people in a situation where they're unable to shower. That's just awful. But of course, this is something the property owner knew about at the time it was used by the city. The owners knew their building couldn't possibly be a shelter, but they were willing to make money off New York City putting people's lives at risk inside of this place. And are we also supposed to believe that the city's Department of Homeless Services had no idea this place was illegal either, yet they were still willing to pay money to try and make this place a shelter anyways? And the owner got paid, the asylum seekers got scammed, this is a mess! And what's really alarming is the city didn't have the fire department inspect this place ahead of time. A landlord can't rent you an apartment unless it's been signed off on by the fire department, yet somehow the city was irresponsibly moving people in here without that signature. And after wasting all this money, then the city says, oh, we're broke because of this crisis, but they're wasting money on all kinds of things along the way. But even though the city's other shelters might look livable, when compared to this nightmare, they've got other bizarre problems. Which also could make them illegal, and people are living in them right now. And the landlords are making millions off of it. So this is an old hotel that for years wasn't being used for anything. It looked abandoned, but luckily for the owners, it's now being used as one of the city's shelters. Now the name of this place is the Knight Hotel, and back in 2019, it fell on hard times. It wasn't making any money, it had tons of debt, and one of the owners unsuccessfully tried to sell his share of the property. Things were such that nobody wanted anything to do with this place. And in 2020, the whole place ended up shutting down completely. It was empty, there were no guests, but the asylum industrial complex complex here has grown to such proportions that this building has more value to the city as a shelter than it ever had on the free market as a hotel room. Right now the city has a contract to pay $230 per room per night, but previously the owners were only able to get around $150 or so per night. And remember, they couldn't rent enough rooms to stay in business, and now the city is overpaying for this place, which makes it look like a total scam. The asylum crisis is the best thing to ever happen to this place. Now look, nobody wants to see families with children sleeping on the streets, but but why is the city paying so much for a place nobody wanted? It just looks like corruption. It looks like shady backroom deals are happening all over town. And as it turns out, they are. This hotel down in the financial district, the city pays $190 a night, but rooms here previously were going for around $100 a night. Every hotel the city rents is a bailout of the real estate industry. And it's not just those two hotels. The city's largest shelter, or one of the largest shelters, the Row Hotel, a 1,300 room pre-war hotel, also here in Midtown, the the city also appears to be paying a lot of money for, and that place was also bankrupt before it got turned into a shelter. In 2022, that particular facility ended up becoming a shelter, and by 2024, the city has paid $137 million to the owners of that building. Now, there's nothing wrong with the city supporting local businesses, but why are they overpaying? If anything, properties that nobody wants and that can't make money on their own should come at a discount, especially if they're closed and abandoned. And you know, had these places been well run, full of guests, it would have been harder to offer them up as immediate shelters to the city in the first place. And these large government contracts are almost a reward for mismanagement of these properties. And it's almost like this shady little game that the entire hotel industry is now aware of and now getting in on after successfully lobbying the government here to shut down private Airbnbs. It's like they own this town. But the next facility on our list is even stranger than this one. Because just like our illegal warehouse, this next place never should have had people living inside of it. But today it's max out.
So here we have the Candler Building, which is probably the strangest shelter on our list for a variety of reasons. It was actually built in 1912 for the Coca-Cola Company. And as you can see from the sign out front, this is an office. This is not apartments, which means living here would be illegal under normal circumstances. However, things have changed and now it's being used as a shelter. It's also right next to the Wax Museum. And the building is also a landmark property because of its old school, beautiful, distinctive design. But as with most of the places is on our list in 2020 it fell on hard times and just before it was foreclosed upon a new investor ended up buying it and unsurprisingly the owners were thrilled when the city announced they had plans to turn it into a shelter and now it houses 800 single men and that's double the capacity of the gas factory we saw earlier but again these are not legal apartments by any stretch of the imagination and now the owners are getting filthy rich because of the asylum crisis new york city landlords who would have thought that they would figure out how to team up with their buddies who run the city to make money off the rest of us and off human suffering. And not only is pretty much every hotel doing this, making way more money than they were previously, late last year, the city signed an agreement with the Hotel Association of New York for 5,000 hotel rooms at a cost of $237 million. And that contract was just extended through August of 2026 for $1.4 billion in profit for the hotels. And that makes it look like this entire thing is just a way for the rich to use their connection to get richer while not actually doing anything to help solve this crisis. Is that what's going on here? And if the city's housing asylum seekers in illegal apartments, is this something private landlords should be able to do as well? Or is it only safe to do this if the city signs a massive contract with one of their buddies who's in real estate? Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.